it's understanding that farming is incredibly unpredictable. I mean, I joke that like, if it rains on a Saturday, we're down 60 grand. Twenty-five thousand people a year from like eighty-seven different zip codes come here to like get plants in the spring for these eight weeks of when the the season's really popping. Tell me a little bit about what keeps you going day to day. I mean, you're waking up and you're like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. I'm motivated. Like, what is what is your fuel? I was hoping you were gonna tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's the distractions, right? I think that's why we all love it. It's like we, as much as we, we sh you know, malign like all the constant distractions and lack of focus is also what makes it exciting. And uh, what I love about farming is not only do you have to have all these different skills, but you get to ex express them every day. So I, I dropped out of architecture school, but I get to be a builder. I get to, you know, slap shit together every day. I get, I, you know, I've learned plumbing. I've done house con re repair and construction. So I get to come fix the plumbing. I get to talk to people about plants and interact in a, in a very um, personal way with all kinds of people. Um, it's those challenges. It's finding a, a new and different challenge every day. The pig escapes, so we have to go catch him and figure it out. You know, <laughs> literally, happen? yeah, of course, it happens a lot of time. Um, or someone throws a sick chicken over, and how do we quarantine? What is this thing? And like, what do we do with it? And so, um, you know, every day is is a new excitement, a new struggle, and a new annoyance and a new headache. But um, it also, um, you know, it's not sitting behind a desk nine to five, and that's you know always what I've been looking for. At least for now, who knows? That might change yeah. in a few years. But um, yeah. So I think I've, I've grown up with uh, that, that very lucky relationship to have with that type of mentor that did invest in me and did have confidence in me and find ways for me to grow and figure it out on my own to some degree of how am I going to add value to this place, how am I going to feel loyal to this place and feel like it's somewhere where I can invest more of my time and talents and energies and then, then con me into being the boss, which was never my plan, <laughs> which is the end result. But the first 20 years was showing that urban farming is possible. And now we've done that. We're 20 years in. You know, we were on the first urban farms in the modern era, and like, you know, we're still here, which is rare for a farm. And um, but the next 20 years is showing that it's like essential. Like you have to have these places, and it's keeping farming relevant to everyone in the city. It's like finding all those points of connection because food is what sustains all of us, and that's what I love about our work is everyone has to eat. It's a base common denominator about for everyone and so it's a chance to get every single person in the neighborhood involved in something in some way shape or form that's it's a powerful thing so there's lots of you know food is, is a, you know, an incredible opportunity really to have people talk to each other what would you tell yourself in that mindset now yeah right so there's always this um I think it's used in like when you go to therapy, they're like, instead of saying no, say yes and, right? It's always like saying yes and finding a way to say yes is what I try to carry with me for my staff. Now that I'm in charge is what I've benefited from from a long time, I think, is someone like really giving faith in me and saying, yes, you know, you can do that. So yes and, yes and, making sure they know, again, what I said earlier, that we're gonna get something from it. What are you gonna learn from this process? How are we gonna build on that for the next thing? Not just yes in a vacuum, but yes and, who's gonna be involved? Yes and, how can we support you? Yes and, what do you need to find success? What does success look like? It's asking those questions at the beginning so when we're going through this work, you feel supported, you feel like you know what you're striving for, and there's benchmarks along the way. And you're not just doing this and then getting burnt out and disappearing. And that's what I see all the time, people doing this work. You're following that passion, but then you get burnt out and disappear, and then everything goes with you. And so how do you build that movement, sustain it? How do you tr transition it on to the next person? How are we making sure that this continuing um, tradition, how do you make sure this continuing learnings are being continued? into perpetuity, into the next generation, into the, the next people that have this job, whatever it is, but that those um, those lessons are being learned and shared, right? And I think that's what's important about what you guys are doing is sharing these things, making sure people are aware of what comes before, what's aware of what's already out there, and where are these things you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but also that people can learn from what you're doing and you can learn from them and that you're continuing this this, edu this self-education. Yeah, I think the important thing is, is like people set this level of like, this is the person I need to learn from. When I say like, <laughs> your neighbor you know down the street I could learn something sitting on the corner like it's like rethinking like who can we learn from we can grab something from everyone if we just listen so that's really our goal and all of it and I just appreciate you sharing your time so that we can listen to it today. Thanks for coming we're happy to have you. Yeah cool cool awesome yeah